Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with Jordan Samuel. If you guys watched our last video together, um, this is kind of a continuation into that and we're going to be answering some of the questions that you guys asked on Instagram. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I know. It's so good to have you back. Yes, thank it's been you. a year. Thank you. I know. I didn't realize that until you said it. I'm like, I feel like it's been a long time because I remember the dinner that we did in LA. Oh, so good. That was fun. That we was ate a lot fun. of food. Wait, didn't we? We did two dinners. Did we do two dinners? We did one originally. Oh no, I guess it was no. We were at that big no. We were at the big no. What it was is that we were at that big table forever, and then we oh, yes, were at the yes, outside table. So it seemed like two. Yeah, that was one night. It seemed dinners. like two dinners. Okay, I forgot about that. <laughs> but I was like, okay. So guys, we're gonna do this. Um, we're gonna break it up into two videos. Half's gonna be on my channel. Half's gonna be on Jordan's channel. Channel. Uh, that way, we make sure that the videos aren't too long. So um, I will have a link in my description box to make sure you guys can go check out the second half. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go by the top comments because there's 195 questions. I doubt we'll get to all of those, but just in case. Okay, so um, for you guys that aren't aware, not only does Jordan own his own skincare line, which I will have a link below too, he's also a pra practicing esthetician. So his hands are on skin, so who better to answer skincare questions? And I know you guys love skincare videos, so. Okay, so first question, someone said, is getting breakouts from overhydration real? Because I feel like it is for me, usually in the form of whiteheads. How can we prevent them and how do we know when to stop layering? Okay, so if they are truly meaning hydration in terms of humectants, mm -hmm. glycerin, aloe, hyaluronic acid, things like that, not that I have personally seen. Of course, you could react to an ingredient and that could yeah. certainly be, but really you can't overdo hydration in terms of layering. I mean, it can get sticky and tacky, mm -hmm. but the skin's only going to absorb so yeah. much. Um, because when we say hydration, we're talking more about water. Water, we're not, we're not yeah. talking about oil. No. Oil-based products are a different story. You can get congestion from too much oil. So that's why I, I just want to clarify that. So if it is hydration, I have not seen that. That doesn't mean that you're not reacting to something which can also give you a breakout or a whitehead. Yeah. Uh, if it is truly from moisturization or layering, whatever, balms, oils, creams, etc., yeah, absolutely, you certainly yeah. can. Um, and then really, I would just step it back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's when it's layering too much, it's almost impossible to tell. Yeah. You know, well, like, I'm not, well, one thing I like about, well, I my skincare is not simple. <laughs> so, like, I like my 17 steps. <laughs> I mean, it's not truly 17. It might be. I don't know. But, like, it's part of, it's therapeutic for me, like, at the end of the night. And just so you guys know, too, um, the business partner's here, if I'm looking off to the side, Aaron. Aaron, <laughs> wave! Huh? Aaron, hi! <laughs> I'm not just looking at the wall aimlessly, I promise. Um, what was I talking about now? Uh, 17 steps at night. Oh, yeah. So I think that you like simple, though. So, uh, yeah. You're yes, like, yeah. you don't need 70 products, which no one needs them. No. I like them. <laughs> but, but that's also a good point because yeah. I say that too. I, regardless of whatever it is, have fun. Yeah. So to that. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. But that, like, when people think, same thing I've talked about in all my skincare videos and even my more affordable, I enjoy a lot of these products, but no one needs them. Like a basic cleansing step, like, there are basic steps that you can have to take good care of your skin that you don't need to go insane for. And there are people that want to do the 20 step light a candle, burn some sage, <laughs> have a whole experience. <laughs> I mean, I don't go that far, but I definitely, oh. like, have my steps down where I'm like, Bang it out really quick. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I like some sage. But I know, no, I do know people that do that. I'm like, it's getting intense in here. It's like a romantic uh, bath. But yeah, it's it's impossible to know when layering is. But yes, if you feel, so with that question, you obviously feel like it is possibly happening mm -hmm. that you are getting congestion from layering too much, mm -hmm. then just start scaling it back yeah. and feel sort of what the balance is for you where you're not too dry, but you're not congested. Um, but again, if it's specifically hydration, like humectants, hyaluronic acid, alloglycerin. No, offhand, that product, those ingredients are not comedogenic. They're not really going to congest mm -hmm. the pore. Yes, you could have a reaction if you're allergic, but that would it be... It could also be maybe you're sandwiching um, like silicones and other things, yeah. and it's kind of causing issues for your skin. It's uh, That's it's reactive. Point, yeah, yeah, so remember, always you want to go from thinnest consistency to thickest, so like don't don't mix something that's water-based and then put an oil on top and then put more water base on top right. and think that they're going to necessarily play well because whatever you add on to the oil, since the oil is heavier, it's just going to sit on top. It's not going to do anything and you're just wasting your product. Excellent point. Um, so someone asked the retinol oil, do I use it before moisturizer or after? They purchased the trio and want to know how to use the oil. So a lot of people have questions about this because it isn't an oil and you know so many times you hear actives have to be the first thing on the skin, which yeah, of course you want the active ingredient to be closer to the skin. 
However, and I do a video on this, there is nothing bad about buffering actives because yeah. we're bombarded nowadays mm -hmm. with actives, yeah. whether it's acids or retinols or vitamin C. And yes, it's good to have on the skin, but buffering with a water-soluble product, for instance, my hydrate serum or a hydration serum, you're going to... Your serums, go show them. I brought them all out. All <laughs> my toys out. <laughs> uh, but the hydrate serum, you know, it's great. It's water-soluble, silicone-free, oil-free. So buffering with that and then following up with the retinol oil is a great one-two punch. Uh, but it is okay to buffer. Allow it to dry, mm -hmm. then go in. Um, if you're using a water-based cream, you can do the retinol oil on top. The cream's going to buffer a little bit more. But again, still okay. You can probably use it more often. Yeah. You can use it every single night. Uh, or you can, again, if the cream, for instance, is uh, my performance cream. Okay. So wait, is that what the trio was? I missed what the trio was. Was the trio the... Um, I, the trio is probably, the Christmas well, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, but there's two different trios. There was one that was our after show treatment cleanser, the hydrate serum, and the retinol oil. Uh -huh. So with that, you would go hydrate serum, then retinol oil, or there was the oily skin one, which was the matinee cleanser, the hydrate serum, and the performance cream. So if she, if she does have a mix of all of them, you can actually, this cream specifically, because it's a peptide based light, light, light it, cream, like green tea water. Uh, you can pop the retinol and the uh, cream together and cocktail it that mm -hmm. way. Um, some people like to layer, but those, our line is formulated to work together. Yeah. So, you know, I say that with caution because you're not always going to want to cocktail a retinol into a, yeah. another product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I proceed with caution. But buffering is not a bad thing. No. I know people here like, you know, yes, you want the actors on the skin first, which, yeah, okay. But you also... It's going to be a lot more aggressive. And I think a yes. lot of people don't know going in that... Retinol is super aggressive. Yes, yes. Even even like OTC ones, I mean, they're not obviously as aggressive as prescription strength, but the reaction you're going to get from your skin if you've never used them, you're going to be like, there's something wrong. Yeah, like you're yes. going to start getting peeling or yeah. red or itchy or like, for me, it was the cracks of my nose and right here. I didn't avoid those areas and I was like, oh my God, I was raw and red and that was from a prescription strength from my doctor at first. I was like... What am I doing? <laughs> like, but I was also putting it on my skin while it was damp. I didn't realize like you have to let your skin completely dry because the water will drive it in deeper. And same thing, same thing, same thing. <laughs> layering with the hydrate serum, allow the hydrate serum to dry. Yeah. And then go in with it. You're buffering, but you're not allowing it to penetrate deeper. And when I use your products at night, so like I will use the after show. Yes. Cleanser. And then when I'm using your retinol, I actually just use the retinol and then I go in with a moisturizer on top. And you can certainly do that too. And then during the day is when I would use your performance cream and some of the other oils yeah. and stuff because for me, I find what works best for my skin is just having it directly on my skin and keeping it simple at night. Like I won't mix acids or anything else like that. I don't like mixing acids and retinols anyway. Learn that the hard way. Or <laughs> my face felt like raw hamburger meat. Uh, too much. <laughs> too much. That's true. Well, because a lot of people, you don't think, like, retinol isn't technically an exfoliator. So I'm thinking, no. oh, well, I could use a chemical exfoliator, right. but I'm like, one's causing inflammation in your skin. So it's like hitting you from the inside and the out. Yes, so exactly. you're getting something exactly. from something from inside and then outside, and then That's your true. skin's like, yeah. meh. <laughs> that was not good for me. Okay, now someone wrote... I recently bought a set and I'm in love with the cleansers and serums. Will there be an update to the hydrating mist nozzle in the future? I feel like I have to hold it more than a foot away from my face. So there's an update to the hydrate mist in general. Um, we just improved the product itself, which is part of our sort of steps in getting into the EU UK market. Mm -hmm. uh, so we took that opportunity to make improvements in the product, make a better product. Um, it's starting with a better nozzle. Again, this can go into a whole packaging discussion. Yeah. Getting custom nozzles with the formula and everything, it can be a very expensive, yeah. and, or we just can't meet the minimums. The minimums are yeah. so high, and that's a, a whole other conversation. Well, it's also the, the viscosity, like the consistency of it, too. If it's thicker, it's harder to get that fine mist without so it So we have removed one ingredient to the new formula, which is the hibiscus hydrosol, which is... You love hydrosols. I do love hydrosols. <laughs> yeah. But we, that was the syrupy ingredient. Mm. So that was what was causing a lot of the issues. And it's a lovely ingredient, um, but that wasn't what was giving you the dewiness and the hydration. Yeah. That was the glycerin, the hyaluronic acid, the red seaweed, and the cucumber, and the tamarind, mm -hmm. which those have not, they're still there. So we just, that's sort of the main tweak with the hydrate mist. It's a better formula, but we removed the syrupy aspects yeah. and have it in to start with the finer mister. So yes, people should have a much, much better experience with this. Cool. 
hope. Yeah. No, they will. <laughs> Someone said, please, please tell me if I can stop using Luna and switch to the Itole with the same results. And I already said, you can. I did. <laughs> so, I was going to say, I am not going to step on another brand's toes. No, so you can no. That I, and you guys know I like Sunday <laughs> Riley. Um, the problem I always had with that oil was I did bring up. A lot of people seem to not understand when I said... They've added blue dyes, and people are like, it's a blue tansy. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I see the blue tansy in the ingredient deck, but on the bottom, they added two blue dyes to it, and I think that was to drive home that there was blue tansy in it or to make it appear like there was more. And when I asked the brand, I got conflicting answers. And granted, they're not Sunday herself, but at first I was told that it was blue so you knew when to stop rubbing it in. Then I got another answer that it was a UV shield which I had to do a ton of research on because I would never heard that. And I'm like, I don't know if dyes can be a UV shield for something with retinol, which I still can't find any evidence of that. So uh, that didn't make any sense to me. So I still think it was to sh try to make it seem like there was more blue tansy in it than there was. So um, this product is way less <laughs> and I get better results from it and I don't have any blue staining on my yeah. pillow or my white sheets or anything like that. So That's I say true. go for it. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Thank You're welcome. You. Okay, someone said, oh yeah, someone asked, can I use skincare for my face on my butt cheeks? And I said skin is skin, so. Skin is skin. I mean, that's very indulgent, but absolutely. And a lot of times, I mean, if you want to go really <laughs> indulgent, like hydrate serum all over your body yeah. and then a body lotion. You'd be like on a slip and slide. Yeah. It just lube you up. <laughs> I mean, again, it's indulgent, but yeah, so skin is skin. Have you seen that there's that one little meme of that guy going down, like, a, it looks like a trash bag slip and slide and he's just like this, he's like all lubed up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I love memes. That'll be us. <laughs> yeah. All lubed up. Someone said, how many steps is too many steps in a skincare routine? When does a product layering lose its effectiveness? So sort of back to what we were saying. Um, it's what you want to, you know, first and foremost, have fun. It is skincare. Yeah. I think we've gotten way too strict about these are the rules and these are the th and of course yes you we all want better skin so yeah. that's i know that's where these questions are coming from but make sure you're having fun because yeah. if you're stressed out about your skincare and you feel like you should be doing more steps or less like that's the wrong answer yeah. like, i mean that's yeah. the wrong like Just always listen to your skin yeah that's important seeing a professional not everyone yeah. can afford to no. but i think if you think about you'd be surprised at how affordable it actually is compared to if you go to sephora and you buy a hundred dollar skincare product and it's not working for you, and then you try a bunch of other products, the damage that you're doing to your skin, the money you're spending on products when you can just go see an esthetician and have them evaluate your skin, tell you what you need, I think goes a long way. That's an excellent point. Um, even a consultation, yeah. it doesn't even need to be a facial, but just an esthetician in a spa or a clinic that's able to look at your face, cleanse your face possibly, go over things, and at least put you in a direction of where you wanna mm -hmm. go. Um, but with steps specifically, Yes, skin again, it's only going to absorb so much. So yeah. at a certain point, layering is going to become um, useless. Useless. And I don't want it's not harmful, but again, there could be congestion depending on what you are layering. Yeah. There could be um, some other issues. Maybe you just don't like the feeling. Maybe, you know, things start pilling. You know, well, I've had people about, talk about um, some of the, like, the, you know, the moisturizer I was showing you I like with the oil mixed in. Some people were doing that, but they have pets, and then pet hair was sticking yeah, in their face. Yeah, that's a big... I, I cat hair, I'd yeah, say anything. Yeah, yeah, so me. some people were like, I'm itching nonstop. It's, so it's like, well, until your skin absorbs it, there's nothing you can do. So that might be an issue for you, too. So no hard and fast rules on layering. Just follow your skin. It could be three products one day, and it could be six the next. Yeah. Because you were traveling, or now all of a sudden you're in the desert. Mm -hmm. and so just really hone in. But yes, at a certain point, it's going to just be useless. Yeah, too much. Is it dangerous to waste of time... Or perfectly okay to use products after their use by date. Example: twelve um, months after opening a moisturizer, what's a realistic use by time for products? It, so, products that have that little jar opening, jar, yeah, jar opening, opening. Um, is has been tested to be like that is mm -hmm. that. I mean, it's there for a reason. Yeah. And I don't know. Don't. Don't play around with it. Yeah. Like if you can, because there's so many things that I mean, this is so dramatic. But you know, if there's a little cut on your skin and you're using something that, that is, is now like, turned, yeah, well, and you don't see it either, and then well, let me just tell you a story about something that used that was expired. It was um, Obagi's Vitamin C serum, and it had it oxidized, and actually can cause damage to your skin if you're using products that are now turned like yeah. it's oxidizing your face and it's not it was giving my skin a tint an orange tint to it too 
So it's like, and then it caused a lot of irritation. Like I started getting a lot of blemishes, which I loved that product, but the packaging in a dropper for um, LAA is not, not good packaging. So it turns really quickly before you could use it all. And I used it after it was expired, it was turned and it gave me a really bad reaction to my skin. So it's like certain things, I mean, something like a moisturizer maybe, I, I still don't know. I always say the same thing. Follow the directions. It's like, would you drink milk that's a year expired? And yeah, and proceed, <laughs> and proceed with caution, knowing that there were tests put in place yeah. to have that on the label. Yeah. So I would follow that. Yeah. You would follow that. I would suggest you follow it. Yeah. If it was for me, if it was a few weeks after, well, I wouldn't. It, it wouldn't bother me. But if it was something like I, I feel like if you think about it, if you open up a skincare product and it's a moisturizer, how have you not used it in a year? If that's what the good by date or 24 right. months right. or if it's a vitamin C, throw it out because it's going to be useless probably by that time. So I just think if you haven't used the product in a year, it's probably something that you don't really like anyway. So you probably should just toss it anyway. That's so true. Yeah. Um, someone said, thoughts on the necessity of using essence in a skincare routine? Thoughts on using retinols and AHAs, BHAs together? Oh, good questions. Okay. So first, essence. Again, not needed. Like to really break it down simply. Yeah. You need to cleanse your skin, you need to exfoliate your skin, you need to protect it from the sun. Mm -hmm. um, retinol is a proven anti-aging ingredient in terms of speeding up cell turnover. Uh, and then there's other things that you're going to band-aid in here and there. So like, no, is it is an essence needed? No. Yeah. Um, great for hydration, depending mm -hmm. on what the product is itself. Um, yeah. And a lot of people use our hydrate serum almost as a thicker essence. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's great for hydration. Is it necessarily needed? No. And But depending on your skin, what you're doing, mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah, I, I always use essences as kind of like my antioxidant step. Yeah. That's basic, yeah. That's basically what I use it for. Or um, even like probiotic. I like some of the probiotic. And that's the other thing ones. too. Essence yeah. is a very broad term because yeah. then you're going to have ones that write. Yeah, encompass they, a lot they, of go, things, they so. go kind of everywhere. But like that SK2 one, I was testing that with one of the, um, actually I might have it right in here. Um, against a Korean brand and I actually like the results I get better from this and it's the same type of like the ingredients are almost very similar but this is oh. like $20 and the SK2 one is like 150 so I'm like mm, I'll take this one yeah but this is something I use it's supposed to be I mean the term essence I think too is supposed to be kind of like a packed in treatment yeah. Like they're supposed to yeah but I just like it for the layering same thing yeah. I like it because I like to sandwich all the moisture exactly yeah, it's great for an additional hydration mm -hmm. step, absolutely. And so then they wanted to know also about how you felt about um, using retinols and AHAs and BHAs together. Yeah, so can they be used together? Yes. Mm -hmm. Should they be used together? Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, it's going to depend on formulation. It's going to pretend, pretend. It's going to depend on formulation. It's going to depend on percentages. And it's going to depend on your skin type and yeah. skin condition and where your skin is that day. Um, Nair to Joy, a facialist that I go to and love. I love her name. Yeah. Every time I right? hear it, it I mean, sounds like a flower. No, I know. It's, it's like <laughs> the most perfect name. It is, it is. Uh, but she's big on retinols in the evening, acids in the AM, and then you you know, you know wear your SPF and you're good to go. You're yeah. fine. And then you're getting them both in your routine, but you're not using them together. And it doesn't have to be every day that you're doing that either. Um, but no, for my skin, I can't really do it. Again, if you're using a really, really gentle acid, you could use our gentle retinol oil yeah. on top of it because of that's the way the yeah. formulation goes. Um, well, I find I can use this with, and typically I don't mix. Typically if I'm on retinol, I don't mess around with that, but since this is housed in oil, I will use this even on top of P50. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. I have no problems with it because it helps soothe it going on. But if I were to use like my different gel, forget about it. Like I cannot flare like a prescription strength retinol with an acid or my skin is like, and even the next day, since I'm already inflamed kind of from it, I kind of steer clear from acids yeah. then too. So I know you probably want a more defined answer, but that is the answer. It yeah. Well, on. well, now what I'm finding is a lot of these formulations for some of these products that contain retinol also have AHAs in, in, in them. them. Yeah, right. already built in. So I would say read the label and make sure you're not doubling up on that stuff because that can cause That's, irritation yes, too. Yes, that would be. Because I made the mistake one time. I had something that said it was a moisturizing face wash. So I didn't even read the ingredients, but it had heavy lactic acid in there. I used that and then I went on with the lactic acid after and the next day I was like, why is my skin so tight and dry? And I'm like, oh my God, when I read the back of the, I'm like, oh, cause I'm tripling up on acids basically. So I'm like, read your ingredients. Read your, yeah. That's important. Um, someone said, any plans to develop an SPF? We were just talking about I this. Know. <laughs> yes, there's nothing in the works right now, but mm -hmm. of course we would love to have an SPF. Um, 
I don't want to use the term uninspired by the ingredients, but sort of what we were talking about. There's yeah. other countries out there right now who I think their SPF formulations are probably yeah, you know, like Japan kills it yeah. with their SPFs. Um, um, the I problem would, is, is getting it approved here. You have well, to go through the right. FDA, and that's like because yeah. <laughs> it's you're making drug claims. And I wouldn't want to bring one out that is yeah just uninspired and just sort of a similar, you know, I just, I feel like there's been, I feel like there will be the next step mm -hmm. for us in the SPF world yeah. at some point. Yeah. It's just not here. Well, I think it's interesting. Tell them about why we were talking about, um, I prefer physical and about your, your, beard. yeah. So I actually prefer physical sunscreen too. I have very sensitive skin, but I also, right now I shave side of facial yesterday, but I usually wear a scrub. Mm -hmm. And so most physical sunscreens, even micronized zinc, yeah. it still gets Can't white hair, and it yeah. catches in the hair and it's, it, you, it's not great. Um, tinted physical formulas work a little bit better because it won't look as, you know, mm -hmm. they can blend in. Uh, and I've had issues with chemical sunscreens, but recently I found a few chemical sunscreens that work, but it's great because then there's no issue yeah. with yeah, the Yeah, they're a lot thinner to, too. Yeah, absorbs right yeah. In. So yeah, just a little interesting. Fact. That's interesting. So yeah, in the works. So it sounds like yeah, I mean, it, it's something. something that we would love to yeah bring to market at some point. So someone said, "What kind of products do you recommend to lessen rosacea or redness on the skin?" I have really good days where my skin is smooth, but right now it's cold and rainy in California, and my skin reacts horribly to this kind of weather. I get horrible eczema, dry skin, and rosacea. I'd love to experiment to see what works. I just need a helpful step guide in the right direction. Okay, so with that, first and foremost, with rosacea and eczema and all of that, if you've not seen a dermatologist, I would see a dermatologist. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just start there for yeah. sure. Um, it, I don't like to start actually with products, topical products for rosacea. You know, certain things like... You find the triggers. And, the and she also mentioned redness, so we, we can address it as more redness yeah. than rosacea. But yeah, triggers, you know, for me too, I know, and from Narita, like the first time she met me, she was like, stop eating tomatoes. She was like, it's not great. Like I'm feeling all this heat. And I went on a full, like, few weeks of not eating tomatoes. It's super acidic. I wonder if that's what it, it is. is. And it? it's mm. the coffee and the red wine and the acid mm. and all the You're things. You're like, I'm not giving up the coffee and the red wine. <laughs> Bye, tomatoes. <laughs> and not even the tomatoes are back. But, uh, <laughs> but I know that my skin will be yeah. warm and hot and red. And so if you are really experiencing that, and again, she mentioned the weather's not great for it, too. So it's going to be the same thing. Look outside of topical products first. Yeah. Weather, diet, make sure those showers are not hot. Yeah, um, never wash your face in the shower. I yes. hear people do that. It's like the, the typically the temperature you like for your body is way too hot for your face. Yes, and yeah, so luke luke warm, bordering on cool uh, water when you're cleansing, uh, minimal acids, minimal retinol, Look at, you know, find a doctor that can help you maybe with diet mm -hmm. um, or look at triggers. You know, if there's something yeah. where you're like, oh, I've been having Alcohol a lot of this. Yes. yes. Start there. Um, again, weather, which you can't help that really. Yeah. Less is uh, more. Less, less is more with rosacea. Yeah. Like, you want to do minimum products. Don't irritate your skin. Like, and kind of that. Soothing. Leave it alone. Yeah. You know, like, soothe it and leave it alone. Don't pick at it. For me, even, I get scared with acids. Yeah. With rosacea, and I would avoid all of that. Just like gentle hydrate. <laughs> and and Narita loves like a lact like a really, really gentle lactic acid mm -hmm. for a rosacea if yeah. you do need to exfoliate. But I think first and foremost, step that back. Yeah. Um soothing, humectants, no fragrance, no essential oils. I'm not anti essential oils, just in this case, yeah. no essential oils. Yeah. You want yeah. nothing that's too. going to irritate the skin. Um no cloths, no rubbing, no muslin. Mm -hmm. um, looking for specific ingredients, licorice root extract is great. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to give you the Latin name because I <laughs> am going to butcher it and I Do couldn't it. even begin I to like, three years of Latin. <laughs> I couldn't even begin to tell you what it is. No, but licorice root extract. <laughs> um, and uh, but getting with your doctor will really help. But yeah, no fragrance, no essential oils, yeah. no heat. Look at internal things, licorice root extract. Uh, calming, soothing. Try to keep it simple. And make yeah. sure that you're not confusing irritation and dryness for rosacea because you can have red inflamed skin that's bothering you because it's really dry and that's not rosacea. Those two things aren't the same. Very true, yeah. very true. I think a lot of times people are like, oh, my cheeks are rosy, I have rosacea. It's like, you feel your skin, you're like, no, it feels like alligator skin right now. It's super dry, like yeah. that's what it is. And once, once you've addressed that issue, it goes away. It's like rosacea is something completely different. So someone wrote, skincare trends you wish would just die already. <laughs> that one has 21 <laughs> likes. Um, we're, honestly, drinking, we're drinking champagne, by the way. Where's uh, your champagne? I don't know. No? Oh, did I leave in the other room? Honestly, yeah, all of them, yeah. which I know sounds silly, but skin is not a trend. Yeah, exactly. You know? And uh, 
it, it just isn't. Like, a skincare ingredient shouldn't be trendy. It should be maybe an up-and-coming ingredient that then is here to stay, like alpha hydroxy acids yeah. in the early 90s were this up-and-coming ingredient. And so if that's considered trendy, obviously it isn't because yeah. it's not. But, yeah, no, trends just in general, no. Cleanse your face, think about like the, wear SPF. I'm trying to think the, the biggest thing that I've seen such a surge in is the uh, face masks, the, yeah. the cloth ones, which... Basically the same thing. You can make your own with your yep. favorite serum yep. and just some gauze, like cotton, and just lay it on your face. Yep. Um, you, if you're buying the already prepared ones, they're going to be more costly. Like you're not getting the best yeah. bang for your buck. Um, my only thing I can think of right off the top of my head is glitter and skincare. That drives me insane. Yeah, I mean, that just, shouldn't, that just shouldn't be a thing. No, it shouldn't. And then, you know what it's for? It's for this age of social media where everyone take a selfie yeah. and then promote our product. And yeah. people are like, let me put all this. I'm like... You can't have like completely spherical where it's going to roll smoothly on your skin. It has to be like hexagon or different shape where it's going to be stabbing you. And they try to say, oh no, it's encapsulated. No, I scratched my face. I like rubbed it on my hand. I was like, just to put it on to see. I'm like, nope, I don't like that. The Sonic the Hedgehog mask, the Power Ranger mask, that stuff. Uh, if you can afford to be, I guess maybe that generation has the money now. Because in my mind, I always think of my sister. Like, I guess my, my sister's a mother of three now, so I guess, I guess it's different. But in my mind, she's always like a baby. So I think of her as that Power Ranger right. generation. So, like, a company that I'm sure you guys will realize. Now, I don't want to necessarily say it out loud. But that's come out with those kind of things. And, like, who is affording to buy an $89 mask that's Power Rangers and, like, with all this red dye in it and all this stuff? Yeah, I'm like, it's no. just not good for your skin. You spend no. more money on packaging and it's gimmicky and it doesn't do anything for you. Yeah, no. So that's the stuff I would like to see gone. But as long as people are buying it, they'll keep making it. Yeah, but trends in general, no. Yeah. So someone wrote, what would be your suggestion as an entry product into your range? Oh, and if, I was going to say, I would love to hear what you have to say. I Because, I mean, yeah. But I would, I would no, say... No, actually this. Oh, God. And I would say this. <laughs> You know what though? Okay, so I love a good jelly cleanser. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's one of my all-time favorite things. And if it's sensitive, they can sensitive. That, but yeah. this is the product of everything in your line that you will see the most results from. Like the, that's I mean, true. This is true. You'll see that. You'll see them with this too. But long term, the retinol, you will see it will do amazing things for your skin. And this is, I think, the most affordable, effective retinol out there. Thank you. Yeah, I love this. One. I happen to agree. <laughs> um, but yes, so it, actually that question would depend on skin type and skin yeah. condition, of course. Yeah. I usually start here because fragrance-free, oil-free, it's all humectants, it's mm -hmm. all hydration. So sensitive, dry, oily, acne, anybody can anybody, use it. That's yeah. why I say start here. Yeah. But yes, exactly. Somebody who wears makeup needs a new gentle cleanser, start here. Mm -hmm. You're looking for more result-oriented, you're a little bit dry, you know, you're at a certain age, the retinol oil. Retinol. So I know that's not the answer again you're <laughs> looking for, but... Yeah. It depends on, and again, maybe what your budget is. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe if you sign online, you're like, I just want to dip my toe in, maybe just start with the cleanser. Absolutely. Good mm -hmm. point. And I love that cleanser. Thank you. It said, should someone be using acids and retinols at the same time? We kind um, of addressed yeah. that. How would that look in a routine, which we kind of addressed. Yeah. Also, how strong is a retinol serum and how long before I should start noticing results? Oh, the, okay. So yeah, so we actually, we have plans with the retinol. And so we are, we, we formulated the retinol by being, we reformulated the oils in it to make mm -hmm. it, it just wears better on the skin. That's coming up soon. Um, but I have found that people really, and we're not, we're not a clinical line and we're not clinical strength. So yeah. we've stopped disclosing percentage of retinol because yeah. people were obsessing over percentage yeah. of retinol. Even it's in like a pH one, on certain things yes, and even a 1% retinol, if it's buffered in this very soothing, calming cream is different than a 1% exactly. retinol serum. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is we're considering this now our gentle retinol and yeah. we're looking forward to coming out with an oil free, mild strength retinol. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at it in steps, gentle, yeah. mild, etc. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of results, a lot of people will say they have results the next day. And that's more just like the first step into retinol. It's not and your you know result. It could be those. It could be the oil. Well, it's the oil. They're seeing the glow from the oil. They're getting the antioxidants. Yeah. They're getting yeah, the vitamins. They're getting the moisture. Um, but, you know, retinol, consistent use, I would say nine weeks, which is pretty typical yeah. for a retinol. Um, you'll start to see some pigmentation lighten. You'll start to see, you know, lessening depth of wrinkles. Mm -hmm. But you really will, like, you will see a change in texture. I feel like we're in an instant gratification. Yeah. People want to see it, like, next day. It's like retinols won't work like that. And even if you're getting a prescription strength, you will hate your life for a month. 
like you will hate your life for a month. They, there's not one retinol product that you can use and the next day you're like, oh my God, my skin is completely better. It doesn't work yeah. like that. Your skin needs to, to build up. And basically what it's doing is it's speeding up your cellular turnover. Yeah. So what is it, a 28 day cycle? It's yeah, basically exactly. speeding that up. But you know what I'd be curious to sit down and talk with is I've been reading journals on this too, is my mom actually brought this question up to me about how, you know how like your body has a certain lifespan so they were talking about, does skin really have that too? Like if you're using retinol and you're speeding up your cellular turnover, oh, like, like at a certain right. point, does it stop? Like, but I said, if I'm 90, I don't really care. <laughs> like, well, right. Too late. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but it is something I'd be curious to yeah, see. Like, is it thing. only that like, your skin can turn over so many times in a lifetime? Yeah. Or is it as long as your body's healthy, it just keeps up with that? So I'm like kind of curious about that. And it does. I mean, you know, the thing with cell turnover and why we want to use things like retinols and alpha hydroxy acids is because it does slow down. Yeah. You know, so it's 28 days for a healthy scan, and as we age, it just slows down. Yeah. Like everything else. I know. You're like, yeah, my body's betraying me. I started realizing <laughs> that little, just little things. Again, I know I'm not like a dinosaur, but little things, I'm like, I never did that before. <laughs> but you know what's I'm annoying? I mean, this goes into cell turnover too, but post inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which a lot of people have issues with. You know, when you were 18, that spot would go away. Yep, you know, and then now you're like, oh, I have a pimple, and now I have a red spot forever. <laughs> like, it's not going away. That uh, sucks. That's a hard truth. I know. <laughs> Teardrop. <laughs> Someone said, how can you tell the difference between your skin having a reaction to a skincare routine, or your just skin is being dry and needing time to level out after starting a new routine? I have dry, flaky skin and don't know which direction to go. Okay. Uh, first and foremost... I don't like people going from, if you have nothing, of course, I mean, if you have like not a, no routine, no routine yeah. yes, you're going to start a full new routine. If you have a routine and you want to introduce new products, one at a time, one at a time, yeah. please. So you can it's, isolate what's causing the problem. And I know like, trust me, I've done this. I still do this to this day. I get overwhelmed. I get excited. So <laughs> I'm like, like, I new products. Yes, <laughs> but I know better. And then I expect then like, then, we, you know, it's fun for one night and then I like, peel it back. Yeah. Um, but if you're truly looking to just figure it out one at a time and not one at a time, like every day in a row, yeah. give it a few weeks. Yeah. Let it settle because then you'll be able to very clearly, very easily to say, Oh, I'm getting a reaction from this. Oh, this yeah. is breaking me out. Oh, this isn't as moisturizing as right. I thought. Whereas if you're doing nine new products at once, even two, yeah, it's impossible to know what is reacting. And, and I think a lot helping. of people miss like they, they, jumble up the difference between contact dermatitis and actually breaking out. So like yeah. if you use a product one night and you wake up the next day and your skin is kind of like, looks like it's all broken out, it's likely contact dermatitis instead of blemishes. Because blemishes take some time they don't to have, form. I yeah. Always, yeah, they they do take time to form. So sometimes people mix those two things up. So it's like, you can pretty much tell immediately if you've tried a product and the next day you wake up and it's not an active like a retinol or even like an acid can really cause that. If it's not something like that, if it's a moisturizer or something, and your skin's doing that, just continue to use. Like, it's it's something not working for you. And this person asked about red flaky skin. Yeah. So if that's where, if that is your skin, you know, if your skin is naturally more sensitive and dry and flaky and, and you're wanting to improve that, um, with humectants and moisturizers, you should see a result from that much more quick than you would, yeah. say, a retinol. Um, if your skin is reacting and turning into red flaky skin, and it's for some reason not a retinol, I would say, yeah. um, I would maybe discard that. Yeah. Like just, I know that's sort of a blanket statement, but no, no, I, it I agree go that because if, if you start feeling the same thing, that tender, the only time I've ever felt like that is actually the first time we talked about glycolic will do that to me, yeah. like a really strong one and retinol, retinol, retinol did that yeah. to me. And sometimes when I first got into like some more aggressive, like the P50 1970, that could leave my skin a little red, but yeah. it would like, it was a flush. It, yeah. would, it yeah. would fade. And I think that might've been the nice in mind that might've, cause that sometimes will make me flush. Yeah. Um, it says, how long should you wait until putting on serums, face oils, moisturizers, et cetera, in each step? Yeah, so I personally think, this is a trend I don't like. People have gone overboard and they now wait 16 hours before <laughs> each step and they're one Three night, days later, yes, three weeks they've from, completed their four one hours routine. later. <laughs> um, I, get, I get what you're doing, but it does not need to be the 30 minute process. Um, directly after cleansing, as quick as you can, I do like to get something on the skin. So yeah. whether for you that's a toner, an essence, a mist, a serum, start getting something on the skin. Uh, of course, then you're going to, if you're going to use a retinol afterwards, yes, you want it to dry. Yeah. But if your face is not drying in 30 seconds mm -hmm. from applying that, that serum, um, I don't, 
you know. Your skin's not absorbing it or yeah, something's or going on, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I well, we've know. always compared, like, I always use that example. Like, remember the desert one I've said? Like, oh, yeah. if your skin is really oily, it's probably going to accept ingredients that much quicker. For me, when my skin was super dry and I started, you would think, like, when it rains in Arizona that the ground would just suck it up because it's a desert and it's super dry, but the ground has become hard, so when it rains, it flash floods because the ground isn't able to accept it. Versus somewhere where he lives, like in Seattle, it's all mossy and green and grass, so when it rains, the ground just sucks it right in. So I think you probably need to figure out if everything's just sitting on top of your skin, probably a little more exfoliation or something. And I really want to, like, do a little tangent on this because that was such an excellent point and description. Uh, Narita Joy talks about surface dryness all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you have surface dryness, which is a lot of times from incorrect cleansing and cleansers, mm -hmm. nothing's getting in. Yeah. And then you're trapping oil underneath. And yeah. so you can lead to blemishes, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get like sort of the dry breakout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, start even looking at your cleanser. Get away from highly foaming cleansers, stripping, oh, yeah. drying, yeah. soaps, etc. I think this purifying scares me. Yeah. Purifying, um, deep, pore cleansing. Be but that was, a great, <laughs> that was a great, that was a great, great point of um, uh, description. It's, yeah, it's you just kind of have to like condition yeah. your skin and now my skin drinks everything right in. But for a while I remember I was like, I look like a grease ball. I'm like, because yeah. everything was just sitting on top because I wasn't exfoliating yeah. and my skin wasn't used to it. So yeah. it just kind of... You need that soft pliable. Yeah. But yeah, don't go crazy. Just make sure everything is dry. You don't need to let the acids work. You know, if you apply something on top of the acid, the acid's still on your skin. It's yeah. not like the next product you're applying is completely yeah. wiping the product mm -hmm. off of your face. The only thing I ever wait is with retinols. Yeah. And yeah. actually, it wouldn't even be like for this one, yeah. I'll put this retinol on and then I'll put the cream right on yes, top. Exactly. If it's a prescription retinol, yes. I let my skin make sure it's completely dry. I put it on and I let that work for about 20 minutes before then I'll go on with like my moisturizer and stuff like that. But that's a prescription. That's true with a prescription. Yeah. That's exactly. But otherwise, yeah, I think you can layer them up. Someone said, I've heard Caroline, the theory that gen gentle retinol like Jordan's will get you to the same place as prescri uh, prescription strength ones. They just take longer, which that is true. It says, how long, what tangible benefits should we see from Jordan's? So... If you're asking me for me that part, it's true. They're both they both at a cellular level do the exact same thing for your skin. One is just going to get you there faster, but you're going to have more adverse side reactions from that, where you can get more irritation, redness, peeling, opposed to something that is a lot more gentle. It is going to take a little longer, but not much longer. It's not like a year longer. It might just be a month longer or a couple weeks longer yep. for me. And again, that to me, that would have been worth it opposed to, I didn't know a lot about retinols at the time. So when I just jumped into a prescription strength, I was like, I'm not gonna make it. And I remember my doctor telling me, just stick with it. Just stick with it for the month because I'm trying to put makeup over it. I look like an alligator. I'm peeling, like my skin is tender. I'm like, I look horrible. <laughs> like, this is supposed to be making my skin better. And I'm like, I'm having a bad reaction. That's what I thought. But it's base it is. It's causing inflammation in your skin, which is then causing your skin to peel and exfoliate. And it's it's harsh. So something like this is not going to do that to you. And side note on that, I'm not a big fan of prescription strength retinols for just normal yeah, skin. You know, mm -hmm. yes, scarring, certain pigmentation. Yeah, there's certain things that yeah. you're going to be put on a prescription strength retinol mm -hmm. for. That's what it was meant for. That's great. Otherwise, and I'm not even trying to sell my product at this point, but an no. over-the-counter retinol yeah. is going to be a safer, more fun mm -hmm. um, bet. And yes, yeah. and, and things you can see too. You can see lessening depth of wrinkles, lightening of some spots, pigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, um, reduction in scarring. Again, it's, we're talking minimal here. It's not, this isn't things that are, you know, it's super, I mean, it would be the same. Yeah, thing it's not like a, fra it's not a Fraxel no. laser. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and your pigment's still going to be there. It's just yeah. going to be lighter. You know, it's, so, but just an evening and a brightening, um, better texture, uh, and just creating a stronger dermal layer, you know, things yeah. that like you will see, but it might not be like the lessening of like a pigmented spot, but creating that stronger, thicker dermal layer that yeah. is going to help you down the line. Well, I find the same thing though, even when you pack on something that has like vitamin C in there, all of those things all kind of attack the same issues, yeah. just in a different way. Yeah. So you're kind of fighting it from all directions. Um, like for me, I was on, and I ha still have prescription strength, but I choose over-the-counter methods now because that was kind of just to jumpstart my skincare yeah. routine when I had been doing nothing for like basically 30 years and then when I started 
that's when I got into the heavy hitters and I was like, I'm not going to make it. And I was trying that <laughs> I'm not clinical. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to. I remember calling my doctor. I'm like, this is not going to happen because I'm trying to put bare minerals on at that point because my skin is just like sloughing off and anything that I put on top of it made it look 10 times worse. And I had outside appointments. So I'm going to see customers and they're looking at me like, huh? don't bring it up. <laughs> oh, no, I look weird. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next up, they said, what are your thoughts on retinol in general? Effectiveness, is it a necessity, and what age do you suggest using it? Effective, yes. Necessity, sure. I mean, you know, necessity is a strong word to me. Like, you need to cleanse your face, you need to exfoliate, and you need to wear sun protection. Yeah. Those are my necessities. The next necessity would be a retinol for me. Yeah. Um, so, yes, but no, it's not like, yeah, if you want a healthier, better skin, yes. Yeah. And especially aging, aging skin. Like... Preventive, it's good to start. I would say, I would say start in like your early third, late late twenties to early thirties. Yeah. Um, but I think if you're older, more mature skin, I think it's a necessity. To me, I think it's a necessity. And it really is a great. I mean, for what it does, it really is a great ingredient. Yeah. Um, it's an antioxidant. It's you know, there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of great things that it does. So yeah, it's yeah. I, I'm a fan. So thank you guys for all your questions. There are a ton. Um, we answered as many as we could. Make sure you check out Jordan's channel for the second half because we're going to break this up half on my channel, half on his channel. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.